Hello, everyone. Uh, I think I'm the first rocket scientist to address this group today, so if you have any rocket questions later, stop by. I'm here to talk about Nanobeak. Uh, Nanobeak is about biological threats. There's a lot of talk today about the kinds of threats that we would expect. There's very little talk about biological threats, how they can affect the world, how they can affect our country, any city in our country that's vulnerable, which is any city in our country, period. We've invented a sensor, and we've invented it with NASA and with uh, Johns Hopkins University. That's what it looks like. It was designed originally for environmental threats, and it's now also being used in the healthcare field for threats such as cancer and infectious diseases. Um, NASA invented this back in 2007, and the reason it was designed was to test the air in the space shuttle, test the air in the International Space Station, and this technology is actually on Mars today. The reason it's on Mars is we want to understand the telemetry of what's in the atmosphere. This is done by basic chemical and environmental sensing. So if it can sense the air on Mars, it can sense the air anywhere. I won US Government Invention of the Year in 2013. Um, and our other partner is Johns Hopkins, which is the oldest and the largest research university in the United States. I'm sure you all know Hopkins. They do a tremendous amount of work for DARPA, for the DOD, DIA. They've been a government contractor for as long as they've been an institution. We also work with the Bloomberg School of Public Health, which was the very first public health school in the world and the largest public health school. If you ever wonder the difference between public health and conventional medical health, the difference is that the job of a public health institution is to prevent disease um, of any form. The job of Johns Hopkins Medical Center, for example, is to cure disease. So very, very big difference. If you're sick, you go to the medical school. If you want to find out how to stop something, you go very basically to the School of Public Health. And the team of the Public Health School and the CDC is who eradicated smallpox just a couple of decades ago. And what they're working on today is eradicating malaria, which still kills 800,000 children a year. The biggest threat are environmental pathogens. These threats can be caused naturally, they can be caused synthetically. Nerve gas is an interesting example, but something that you hear about very often and you don't consider is something like the Zika virus. Um, the Zika virus is the most deadly pathogen we have ever found uh, in the history of looking at these diseases. Zika can be transmitted by mosquitoes, that's how it's typically done. But the devastating effects of this disease are really extraordinary. If a woman is bitten by a mosquito carrying the Zika virus, that woman is effectively unable to, she becomes effectively sterile because if she has a child, the probability of birth defects is close to 92%. Those birth defects involve having one third less of a brain and 25 to 33% less of a skull. The child cannot survive. Um, we've discovered later on that there's brain damage to the men or the women who are bitten by the Zika mosquito. So these are called vector-borne diseases. They're transmitted by blood-sucking insects like mosquitoes, fleas, almost anything can transmit this disease if they touch blood. But here's why it's so horrible. Here's why it's worse than yellow fever or dengue or e Ebola or any of the other diseases. Zika can be transmitted sexually. So if someone is bitten with a mosquito that carried that virus, and they're later on, the partner has sex with another individual, that virus will be transmitted almost instantly. It's the same impact that AIDS has. But AIDS cannot be transmitted through mosquitoes. We all know how AIDS can be transmitted. This makes it incredibly deadly. Uh, over at Johns Hopkins, we have 30,000 mosquitoes and they're all infected with different diseases. Imagine if somebody took a group of mosquitoes and dropped them into a city, or dropped them into Central Park, or dropped them um, in, near the Potomac, or any area that would be a dangerous point of attack for the United States. The mosquitoes would breed very, very quickly. No one would know what they're carrying. There's nothing we can do to protect against it. 
There's no cure presently for Zika, although we're developing a vaccine. There's no test for Zika, although we're developing a test. It's like Ebola was a couple of years ago, so it's a tremendously deadly threat. Um, our chemical sensor, to talk about the solution, is a countermeasure. It's the ability to go into any environment and seek out something. It works the same way that a dog can be trained to find explosives, missing children, narcotics. We train the sensor based on doped carbon nanotubes to look for a particular set of molecules or a particular set of organic compounds which are directly associated with the condition that we are at risk for. Um, back about five years ago, it was used to look for nerve gas and there was a relationship involving um, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. So whatever the threat is, we can train the sensor to look for that threat and that it can be deployed in any environment wirelessly and efficiently so that you can look for what we're trying to prevent from tremendous exposure. This is the device, very, very small. It's being manufactured in the United States using engineers from NASA and physicians from Johns Hopkins. So this is very much a US initiative. It's inexpensive. We'll be making them for under $200. So it's incredibly powerful. And what we're using it for right now, um, one of our first applications has to do with marijuana. Um, half the country has legalized marijuana at this point for either recreational and or medical purposes. The side effect of this is that DUIs from drugs are now dramatically higher than DUIs for alcohol. It's more potent, it's more dangerous. People don't even know they're intoxicated because they're just not, they haven't had the experience of dealing with the most potent forms of THC or marijuana that's in the marketplace today. So we're giving to law enforcement the tools that they've had for decades for alcohol, but we're giving it to them now for marijuana. And it won't be limited to marijuana. It'll be able to test for heroin, crack, cocaine, methamphetamines, any illicit drugs. We're taking it to the sports industry to test for things as basic as steroids. Um, the Lance Armstrongs of the world, cases where athletes are using drugs to determine whether or not they can enhance their performance, which obviously they can, and that's why they do it. Insurance companies to test for drug use when people are taking out very large life insurance policies. So it can be used for almost anything, but drugs is just the very first purpose of it. And our healthcare purpose is cancer. Um, 1,000 people die from cancer every hour in this country. We've developed the ability to detect lung cancer at stage one. At stage one, 90% of the people who are sick can be cured. At stage three or four, 90% of the people who are sick will die. So being able to diagnose this at stage one is extraordinary. Um, that will be out next year. It's going through the FDA this year. It's based on biomarker analysis and will go from lung cancer to breast cancer, ovarian, prostate, colon. Basically every form of cancer has a structure we understand from organic compounds and we're not predicting it, we're finding it. This is not about opportunity of perhaps this will happen. This is that we've already found the cancer before you're symptomatic. So that's what we're about. Um, open the floor to questions, which I think we have about a minute left for. No? I'll, I'll be on the side if anyone wants to talk. And by the way, Bluetooth, it just communicates with everything instantly. Doesn't require any third-party software. Everything is self-contained in the device. Yes, it can do ketones, absolutely. Ketones, molecules, volatile organic compounds, anything that we can determine algorithmically, we can program it to look for. Thank you.